All right, we are live. We are live uh, this afternoon. This is our first Facebook Live interview um, for featuring small business innovators. So uh, good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for tuning in on, um, on this Tuesday. So appreciative that you're here. Um, and I hope you really walk away feeling inspired and encouraged um, from hearing from two of these two business innovator rock stars. Um, I have such a privilege of being here. Um, if you've never met me before, I'm Lindsay Kiesler, President and CEO of the Chamber of Catawba County. And it is truly my privilege and pleasure to work alongside of entrepreneurs day in and day out to help them grow their business. Um, but not only that, help grow this community. And undoubtedly, the last seven weeks have been difficult amidst the COVID-19 crisis, but I have continued to be so encouraged uh, to see business do what business does. And they have been creative and resilient and innovative. And that's really what inspired this series today. So we really wanted to pull a uh, one by one, several innovators from our community that have pivoted and have shown creativity and, um, and interview them on live on Facebook uh, for the first time. And so today um, I have the privilege of hosting Gina Bumgarner. Gina is the owner of Nailed It DIY Studio in Hickory. And you'll hear from her in just a moment. Uh, but I wanna take a minute too to say thank you to our sponsor who has made this possible. Jay Brown, the founder of Jay Brown Realtors, who is a true innovator in his own right, uh, certainly a community champion, a community advocate, um, and affectionately known as Homeboy. Uh, Jay, thank you so much for, for your sponsorship and for making this possible. And I want to turn it over to you for a second, uh, just to say a few words. Thank you, Kim. You are way, way way too nice. Uh, I appreciate it. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to join forces with the chamber and get into a few questions with local entrepreneurs and business owners. Uh, I'm very, very excited to hear from Gina today. And I uh, just want to thank her for being a part of this. Thank the chamber for hosting this and uh, appreciate uh, every, everyone downtown, all the business owners, across Catawba County that have kind of raised their standards and changed their ways and figured out a way to uh, do, do lots of good things in a really, really hard time. So appreciate it to be a sponsor and I'm looking forward to hearing from all these business owners. Thanks, Kim. Uh, awesome, thank you, Jay. I really appreciate it. Um, speaking of, uh, to help other people hear about this and to hear from our innovators each time, I want to encourage you to engage with us. Um, so as we are as we are live, I want you to go ahead and tag somebody, those that are watching, tag someone that needs to watch this video. Uh, tag someone who could really be inspired and encouraged by the words that are gonna be spoken today. Hit the like button or share button. Um, give someone, give us a heart, or give us a wow if you can hear us loud and clear. Uh, and so, and the other other ways you can watch, start a watch party or share the video. So thank you in advance for your comments. Uh, we will see the comments. So if you have something that you'd like to share with us, or if you have a question that you'd like for me to ask of Gina, uh, once we get started, go ahead and drop that into the comment box and um, we will, I will interject that conversation to our discussion. Um, so again, also, this is our first, the first time we're doing this. So hopefully the technology is going to work with us. Um, if it doesn't, we will learn and, and do better next time. But um, I appreciate you all being, being patient and also making this really fun and engaging. So if you're watching the replay, I encourage you to comment replay and let us know uh, what you're watching. And so go ahead to test that right now. I want you to drop a comment and describe how your how your week is going so far. So it appears we have quite a few viewers online. So if you just take a second so we can know that the comments work, go ahead and throw in, um, type in a comment so that we know that, so we know how you're doing today.
All right, and I see several people commenting. So thank you, thank you very much. And go ahead and share the video. So before, uh, before we get started, I want to, um, again, thank you, Gina, for, for being on here today. Uh, Gina, she opened her studio in 2018, and that was after she had spent 18 years in education. So she was an educator as well as an administrator for a school in our community. Um, and really, she kind of at one point said, I, I'm just looking for a change. And and so she jumped into entrepreneurship headfirst. And we're so, so proud of her, to know her. I, I've met her several months ago now, and I've just been really thrilled to get to know her and know her entrepreneurial story. Um, one of her goals, she said, is to build relationships with the community of other small business owners. And you'll hear fr that from today. It'll be very obvious when, when you get to know her. And her mission is to choose joy. Choose joy is, is her slogan. And so um, I have also seen how she has truly pivoted and shown innovation and in everything that she's done over the past several weeks. Um, so, but, but first, really to get to know Gina um, on a, a personal level, before you hear about Gina the entrepreneur, I wanted to, uh, to start something and really get this sort of a get to know Gina in five minutes or less. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun here um, and we're gonna do a rapid fire Q and A. Okay, Gina, you ready? I'm ready. Awesome, awesome, there she is. Uh, so here we go, getting to know, this is called 15 Q's with Gina. All right, Gina, what is your favorite beverage? Definitely, that is sweet tea. What's the best thing about Catawba County? Oh, it's truly it's people. They're just the most wonderful people. What's one cause that's near and dear to your heart? Foster care for sure. Beach or the mountains? Beach, totally. If you had a superpower, what would it be? I would be invisible. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. What does creativity mean to you? Creativity is all about being outside of that box and there's no right or wrong and you just get to truly express yourself. What is your favorite scent of candle? That is um, sugar cookie because it makes me hungry. <laughs> what, is, what is the favorite title that you hold? Mom. Early bird or night owl? I'm more of a mid-afternoon-ish kind of gal, but if I had to choose one of the two, I would definitely go with Night Owl. Nice, nice. What was the last book that you read? It's Not Supposed to Be This Way by Lisa Turkhurst. If you were famous, what would you be famous for? Okay, this one's easy. It would definitely be for being silly. And if you've watched any of my Facebook lives, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Ah. If it's hot. Now, if it's cold, tea. Awesome. Tiger King or Outer Banks? I'm going to go with Outer Banks on this one. That's a tough one. And then most important question of the day on takeout Tuesday, taco Tuesday, and Cinco de Mayo, where should people order takeout tonight? El Serape. Awesome people, awesome food. Awesome. Awesome. Gina, thank you for that fun. And I hope you all that were watching uh, understand that Gina is an entrepreneur, but Gina is also a, a, a human and she's a community member and she's so fun and passionate uh, to, be a, to be a part of this community. So Gina, um, I said a little bit about your background, but why don't you go ahead and tell the viewers a little bit about you and about Nailed It DIY Studio. So Nailed It DIY Studio is exactly what it sounds like. It is totally do it yourself. And the thing that I love the most about my studio is the fact that people get to come in and they start with raw wood and they end up with something beautiful that they're able to be so proud of and sometimes truly amazed that they were able to 
to do it themselves. Sometimes people come in feeling a little bit intimidated, like I'm not really crafty, I'm not creative, I don't know how to do this, I've never used power tools before. And then they leave with such a sense of accomplishment and being able to be a part of that and helping people through that experience is just, it's hard to put words on it, it's just amazing. And I can, I completely understand that in first person because I am not a crafty person. Uh, we had our staff Christmas party at Nailed It DIY Studio, actually, which is the very first time that I met Gina. And she made a not crafty person feel extremely comfortable. And she brought the creativity out of me. And so thank you for that, Gina. I definitely, definitely um, understand that first in first in the first person. So like I, like I mentioned before, I mean, this, the past seven, eight weeks has been, has been difficult. Our lives have been disrupted, right? The way we do business, the way we've learned, the way we conduct our lives has changed. And some of it's changed for the temporary and some of it has changed permanently. Um, I know that you've been doing some really great things to help continue to bring your products and services to your customers. And so uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you have adapted your business since COVID-19? Yeah, so um, starting off in the very beginning, the first thing that I shifted gears to and went to was what we called our take and make projects. So, and we started really, at least for me, my big focus was with kids. And so those projects were, th were items that moms, dads, grandparents could come and pick up curbside at the studio and have something fun and creative and outlet for their children to be able to do at home. And with school being out and moms and dads and sometimes grandparents in certain cases or other relatives trying to figure out how to teach their children or teach their young one at home at the same time while trying to maybe work from home or trying to just keep life going, it was a great way to feel a need and give kids that ability to still have some creative expression. So that's kind of how it started off. And then we added in adult projects because let's just face it, adults need to have fun too, not just kids. And so we added in some adult projects and that was how we started off with those kinds of things. And then one of the things that I realized is we saw a need for more. And so Every week I've added new, um, new projects, new products that people can get and to have at home to do it themselves. And, and one of the things that I realized was that people need that kind of outlet. People need the, the ability to just take a break from COVID-19, take a break from work, take a break from the world, and just have something that allows them that time. And so it was, it was great to be able to see the reaction from so many people who were getting the projects. Um, so we added in, you know, other offerings, bundles and, and things like that, where it wasn't just one single project, they had multiple projects that they could do either together as a family or, or one person did them all, however it was gonna work in that particular family. And then looking for ways that we can fill needs based on events and things that are happening in our life right now, like graduation. So we added in these graduation banners that people could get to recognize their senior or their middle schooler who's transitioning to high school or their elementary who's transitioning to middle school and offerings for Mother's Day, things like that. One of the things that I'm really excited about that I have just added in um, is a virtual party. Had my first one of those. I've got another one of those coming up this week. And it's just, it's such a great experience. Nailed It is about the experience. It's about the time spent together and having that experience that you're sharing with a friend or sharing with a loved one. And so that virtual party is gives me the ability to be able to share that experience and give that shared experience. So for me, this has been, even though I've only done one virtual party so far, this has been by far my favorite thing that um, I've adapted and changed is to add in that element because that time spent together where it's not just let's have a meeting in Zoom because it's for work. No, let's have some fun together and connect and share stories and experiences and then all create this beautiful project just like we would if we were in the studio, that has, that has been something awesome that I'm very proud of being able to offer. You know, Gina, I commend you because you truly have redefined what an experience is. 
Um, so something that was very reliant upon a physical space, aka your studio, you have now taken it to the internet and created something that's really just as fun um, and receiving the full, the full benefit of, like you said, being together, even though you're apart and physically. Um, and so doing the thought of having a virtual party, like, is that not an oxymoron? <laughs> virtual <laughs> party? The thought of having a virtual party uh, eight weeks ago probably never even crossed your mind, right? Oh, absolutely not. I would have never dreamed that I would be saying, hey, let's have a virtual party, guys. This is going to be a thing now. It's just crazy to think of that. But I think we all have seen and, and we all know how much we need each other and how much we need that connection with our friends, that connection with our family, that, that connection with anybody, really, just being able to have that. And so I'm really proud of, of that opportunity through the virtual party. That's just, it's really neat. And I actually was, had the benefit of being part of a virtual party this last weekend. And um, I will say, we all were there. We had all of our projects in front of us. We're doing it. Gina's instructing us. She's hosting us. Um, we're having conversation about life, about our goals and ambitions. And um, then we end up with a fun piece that you can display in your home. And so I, I commend you for really thinking outside the box and challenging people to not only get, you know, utilize creative expression as an outlet, but to utilize connectivity and, and being together and um, continuing to converse and um, and not be isolated and to be connected um, through your business. And what, what, a, what a powerful gift that, you, that you've been given and that you give to others every day. So thank you for that. Um, so what, we talked a little bit about some of the strategies that you've used, that you've used to engage with your customer base, but I know you've also been doing a lot of online connectivity through Facebook Live and other things to help promote your business. So, so talk to us a little bit about some of the innovative strategies you've used to continue to connect and engage your customer base. So Facebook Live has definitely been an avenue for that. And um, I have done several different things for that. Right in the beginning, my niece, um, Madison, was here with me at the studio for a little while. And I thought, why not capitalize on her awesome talents and her being here? And we did like a tween week series and did some type of DIY project um, that kids could do or tweens could do at home. Um, and it wasn't even anything you had to buy from us that nailed it. It was just, you know, things you might get at the dollar store or things that you may have already have around your house. And so we did things like that. And then I did a, an outdoor week series where you just took common things you would have around your house and you just make something out of it, like a wind chime or a bird feeder, you know, something along those lines. Because again, what I feel like is the most important aspect of my business and the part of my business that I absolutely love the most is, is developing those relationships with people. And it was important with me for me to be able to find a way to do that. And whether anybody watched or not, it did as much for me as hopefully it did for people who were out there watching. And then I've also done a weekly um, story time adventure with Gina going back to my educator days and reading some type of children's book and doing a couple of craft projects that relate to the book. Again, nothing that you needed a nailed it um, project for, just some good old fashioned fun and being silly and, and kind of showing myself and, and letting people see who I am and what I'm about. And that was important to me um, through some of that experience. I also did a gratitude challenge. So more aimed at the um, adults just to find ways for myself and encourage myself to remember we all have so much to be grateful for, even though we're going through this tough time and this unprecedented period in our lives that we can look and find if we're looking gratitude in the everyday. I love it. I hope our, those that are watching are really pulling out these extreme, you know, I call them truth bombs and um, just extremely valuable nuggets of what you're talking about being authentic, um, really having building relationships, fostering relationships with your customers that are based off of get them getting to know you and you getting to know them. Um, and I think you're right. Facebook Live, this is something that we have dabbled or leaned more into as an organization as well, because 
um, it's a it's a way to to create conversation and engagement. And so I commend you for that. And, and especially uh, not only uh, talking about what you the business of what you do every day, right? You are helping them understand that there's so much more to your business and to your why you do your business than just helping people create projects, right? There's so much more to that. Um, being grateful and um, appreciating every day and building relationships. So that's that's really amazing. But so in talking about being creative, Gina, you know, what are some benefits of doing something creative? The one thing that I consistently hear in the studio when people come in to do a project is, oh my goodness, this just relieved so much of my stress. This just helped me relax. And so those are definite benefits of creativity is having that um, release and that ability to just forget life for a little bit and to de-stress and to allow yourself that op opportunity to relax. But, you know, creativity helps to promote problem solving and critical thinking. And so oftentimes people don't make that link with creativity, but it's there. There's a lot of research about that. And so that's one of the reasons that I'm so passionate as well about creativity, because it definitely engages parts of your brain and gets um, parts of your brain into gear and can help you solve other problems. So having that time to just de-stress, relax, to do something that um, gives you sort of that sense of purpose, that feeling of pride and that accomplishment. Um, it's just amazing. And I think everybody should infuse some type of creativity in their day every day. Awesome, Gina. I want to encourage those that are watching. How are you being creative? Um, are you doing something maybe, and maybe you're not naturally creative and you feel that um, there is something, you know, that's an area that you can challenge yourself. Um, so maybe, maybe that's a good question. What are ways that you're, you've challenged yourself over the last eight weeks um, to lean into that you didn't necessarily even think of doing before COVID-19. <clears throat> Go ahead and um, take, a, take a few moments and engage with us. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, <clears throat> and also too, Gina, talking about creativity and, and that expression and how all of our brains are wired differently. I really noticed that when we did our team activity, right? We had all of our, our entire staff there and, you know, some people were really into it. Some people were attention to detail. Others like, you know, took, took the instructions very literally. And then some were just sort of completely outside the lines. And I thought it was really magical to see how a team, how every aspect or each individual on a team can really contribute in different ways. I don't know if you have anything else you want to say about that. I, you know, team building and creativity can can go hand in glove and can really enhance that ability for the team to be able to work well together. But I see it all the time in the studio. You know, you've got very different personalities that come out and maybe someone who is much more of a leader in the workplace kind of takes more of that back seat and, and you see other people step up and rise up and their leadership really shows through. So it's really a fun and beautiful thing to watch to see the different ways that each person approaches the project and approaches their um, ability to sort of play with colors and to mix and try technique and to do different um, different um, things to step outside of their comfort zone and think, you know what, I am going to try that power tool. Let me get that sander and see what I can do with this. So it's truly a beautiful thing to watch. Yes, I forgot to mention, Gina, it's not just about paint brushes and paint and staying in her studio, you get to use like drills and staple guns and nail guns. Um, so it, it gets it gets serious up in and <laughs> nailed it DIY studio. Uh, we do have a question from Facebook, and I want to ask you this because I think it's really really good. And thank you guys. Keep keep up your questions because I'd love to I'd love to use your questions even instead of mine. Um, so with all the innovation and all the creativity and how you've pivoted over the last six weeks, what is the one thing you're most proud of that you've done? That That's a fantastic question. And so I'm definitely going to have to go with what I am absolutely the most proud of is, um, so during this time, my pastor's wife had um, 
a, a massive heart attack. It happened at work. Wow. She coded and um, was in the ICU for, for 10 days. And so this was right about the time when the um, statewide shutdown was announced by the governor. And so things in my business just almost stopped. Like, pretty much just ceased and stopped for those couple of weeks. And, you know, I just felt a need to do something to try to help in this situation. And so I got this idea, I'd done these crosses at Easter. So I did a smaller version of a cross and just threw out there, hey, let's do a fundraiser and help support this family because I knew that their needs financially were gonna be great and the stress and strain and everything else. And it it just exploded and for, um, a couple of weeks there, we pretty much were running um, the Henry Ford production model here in the studio, making um, 250 crosses. And we ended up with over $5,600 um, for this family. And I just, you know, and all of this, for all of this to happen in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of uncertainty of, am I going to be able to pay my rent this month? And we gave 100% of that money to, to the family because that's what I felt needed to be done. And, and simultaneously, while all of this was happening, I had um, someone else that was supposed to have a, an adoption fundraiser in the studio um, during the month of April. And so we weren't able to make that happen because obviously people couldn't come to the studio and I said, hey, why don't we try a virtual adoption fundraiser and see how it goes? Because I started offering shipping. And I said, this will open up to more people that you might can say, hey, do you want to help us out with our um, fundraiser for our adoption? Because I can ship to you. And so we did that as well. And that was happening um, at the same time. And, you know, that to me, Lindsay, is one of the reasons why I started this business is mm -hmm. to be able to find ways to fill needs within our community, to find ways to help people who just need a hand, who didn't maybe even ask for help, but you, they, you know they need help and you just are finding ways to give back. And that's what is so important to me. And one of my major goals is to find ways to continue to do that, to support other businesses, um, other small businesses here in the downtown and across Catawba County because I feel like together we are so much more and finding ways to unite and to, and to be strong together, whether we're in a crisis or whether it's just hopefully another ordinary day here in um, Catawba County that we'll be experiencing um, before too much longer. I, that's critical to me and something that's near and dear to my heart. So I'm so proud of that and so thrilled that I was able to, to work with those families and help them. You know, hearing you talk uh, reinforces my why, why I do what I do, why I feel like it's the best job in the world when I get to get up in the morning and work with individuals like you who truly care, not only about creating something for yourself, filling a need, solving a problem, uh, bringing people together uh, to make, pe to enhance the lives of those around them. And so I really, I really and truly commend you for for your passion and for your why in your business. Uh, Gina, we did get another question from Facebook. And I think this is also really wonderful. And talking about innovation, we talked earlier about disruption and how some things are going to be temporary, right? We will return to some sort of normal, but it will be a new normal. And the, the new normal piece or the hyper change piece is the fact that there are some things that will never be the same. You know, some things are permanently disrupted and uh, to, to what our whole conversation has been like, and sometimes it's to the better, right? It, we realize things that we never thought were possible before. Um, and if we were ever in a place of comfort, happiness, peace, we would have never just, we would have never discovered those things. And that's, that's what innovation is, is um, finding ways to adapt to a new normal. So this question says, what have you started doing that you will probably continue doing even after you can open your studio? And then the opposite, what are some things that you did before that you probably won't start doing, you know, keep doing after COVID-19? 
That's that's a great question. So one of the th what the thing that I started doing since COVID-19 that I'm going to continue doing, I think is going to be um, putting myself out there and, and showing my, myself more through things like Facebook lives and just things um, that can connect and engage with with people because I feel like um, Again, like I said, that probably did more for me than maybe it did for other people. I just truly enjoyed that. And so just kind of offering those little tips and tricks of the trade that maybe I know that could help somebody. I did, um, we put some shiplap in a room at our house. And so I did a little quick Facebook live tutorial on here's how you whitewash shiplap. So just little things like that, just those little extra, you know, here's, here's something that I know, and maybe you might like to know this too. So let me throw this out there. So that's something that I'm definitely going to continue doing um, that I really wasn't doing before for maybe a variety of reasons, but, um, um, I feel like I've seen some some great reason to keep doing that and something that is not going to return to normal you know that's that one I'm not really sure about I think here in the beginning one of the things that's definitely not going to return to normal is going to be able to have large parties here at, inside of the studio now I do hope that that's going to return to normal one day but um, you know so maybe that virtual party that um, I talked about can feel that need. Um, I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out and, and see what are the needs of the community. How can I use my business to continue offering the things that make nailed it, um, nailed it and make the experience and share the experience with other people. So um, that having large groups, I would say, is probably at least in the short term going to be something that won't be able to return to normal. Thank you, Gina. All right. And as we sort of begin to wrap up our conversation, which I've had the best time just chatting with you here. And I, I know our viewers on Facebook Live have also been really engaging and they've dropped several comments. I, I want to remind you, the more people, I, I want a lot of people to hear this story. And I want a lot of people to hear from our small business innovators. So if you wouldn't mind sharing this video or starting a watch party, um, either now or in the future. And if you are watching the replay, please go ahead and, and write replay. We'd love to hear that you that you tuned in today. So uh, this last question, Gina, uh, what is one thing, if you could leave any, if you could tell our viewers, and um, most of which are business owners themselves, um, if you could leave them with something uh, from around this topic of innovation or um, around this topic of being an entrepreneur that adapts and is agile and nimble to change in our ever-changing environment, uh, what what would you what would you leave our audience with today? So what I would leave is don't be afraid to try something and fail. And you're that's so hard for me because I've got this perfectionist type A nature and this perfectionist type A personality. Um, if you looked up my Enneagram type and if you know anything about Enneagrams, I'm a three. And so, you know, I like to have that put on the best face and see only success kind of outward appearance. And that's not what small business and entrepreneurship is about. It's about trying something and falling flat on your face and then picking yourself right back up and trying something again. So I would say that would be the biggest thing that I would believe is that don't be afraid to try something and fail because you just don't know where that's going to lead you and what that's going to encourage you and motivate you to try again or tweak or adjust. And, and then, then maybe that will be the, the opportunity that's the successful um, thing to try. And so that to me, Lindsay, is, is what it's about and something that I've definitely learned that you've just got to put yourself and you got to fit forward. I love it. I love it. Gina, thank you so much for being our first guest and our first small business innovator that we're featuring on this new Facebook Live series. I want to thank Jay Brown and Jay Brown Realtors and their whole team for making this possible and being our sponsor for the month of May. Uh, we will continue this series. We look forward to uh, tuning back in on Thursday, Thursday, same time. 2 o'clock p.m. We will feature special guest Ryan Gilbert with Rigid AV. So Ryan will also tell us uh, his story, and I really look forward to that. 
but Gina, I just, I thank you so much. Again, I thank you for your passion and for being our guest today. Go ahead and leave our guest with the details of where you're located, how they can get in touch with you, um, how they can follow you um, and, and continue to be a part of your journey. Yeah, okay, so we are right in downtown Hickory. If you've been a longtime native of Catawba County, then you know it's where the Army Navy store used to be in that strip. So that's where we're located, just up from the post office on Government Avenue. Our website is hickory.meldedDIY.com, and you can find all of our Take and Make projects there. You can also click a button to request a virtual party. I would love to have you do that. And then we have, of course, the Facebook and Instagram page, Nailed It DIY Studio Hickory. So I'd love for you to like and follow along and you can go back and you can see me and why I would be famous for being pretty silly because there are some really <laughs> funny things on there I'm not kidding um so go and check that out if nothing else it'll make you have a good laugh for the day awesome well Gina thanks for being our guest thanks for also for being our our partner uh, and great chamber member I think everybody who's watching today um I think we've We've, we're up to 600 on this first live video already, 600 views. And so we're very grateful for that. Um, thank you all to all of our chamber partners. Um, you guys have been um, extremely generous and loyal and it's such an honor to advocate on your behalf and to work alongside of you um, and for you during this time. So if there's anything that your chamber can do for you, you know how to reach us. Um, and please, please reach out and we are here for you. We are in it with you. Um, and we're so, again, thank you for tuning in today. And we will see you on Thursday, 2 o'clock p.m. Facebook Live for another small business innovator. Thanks again.